to start with the session on the topic exploring new horizons in aadhar usage i'd like to invite mr vijay ujjini principal application consultant ui dai so uh, today's uh, session is all about uh, trying to find out new horizons and areas to bring next leap of phase to uh, bring fintech uh, innovations primarily in the areas of kyc and kyc is one area that has created innovation for our country in last 5 years which opened up the opportunities and possibilities that can be imagined uh, like 10 years ago uh, so what we have been doing in uri last 18 months uh, is taking uh, uri is always at the cutting edge in terms of finding out new innovative ways of uh, providing authentication and uh, identity services to the, the residents and uh, the core principle of uri is being digital identity unlike uh, uh, a traditional one and on those lines uh, um, i would, uh, would like to present some of the thoughts and ideas that we've been innovating and then it's ready to be rolled out in a limited pilot manner as we speak and our, our belief is that this is going to create next exponential leap frog cycle uh, in terms of reaching out to the customers and opening up that innovation uh, in that possibilities so with that being said um, works so uh, what i would like to talk about today is about uh, taking existing core principles that we all believe in simplicity privacy and security uh, both from the business entity perspective and more importantly from a resident perspective and bringing together existing component that were already available in the ecosystem uh, be it offline kyc just uh, out of curiosity i just want to get a vote of uh, rise of hands to see how many of you are aware of offline kyc capability that exists today uh, uh, as a feature okay great good to see that and uh, mrr application again i would like to get a rise of hands to see how many have used mrr as individual capacity yeah there we go so if you look offline kyc is fairly away known mrr is fairly less known and more importantly how many of you have used face authentication from uidi in recent uh, time yeah it's even less so so what we've been doing is uh, brought this whole concept of face matching uh, which enables face authentication which enables uh, a normal android device to open up that biometric authentication capability without having to procure a finger device and so forth and marry these three components and apply those principles to open up next phase of innovation so what we have done is uh, to bring in the resident experience of use of offline xml and whoever has used it is very cumbersome because of the way it is exposed and opened up in terms of it is direct resident access between uid and resident and uh, it is available regulatorily as an offline kyc uh, 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 document that uh, that is valid enough for using using it as a digital identity document which is mission readable and all all good thing non repeatability and so forth uh yet bringing the privacy angle to this mix is by ensuring that the offline kyc xml doesn't have any aadhar number embedded in it and uh, it opens up the possibility of using local face match to open up the proof of presence which is the most important attribute of aadhar in terms of proving one's identity and giving granular control to the resident that whole kyc xml has the full kyc can one can open up selective kyc based on industry usage at the purpose driven so that i don't uh, have to, if there is a touch point where i don't have to declare my address or date of birth only my name and year of birth is good enough for my point of entry can i open up that data exchange in a seamless way and finally consent so all the interaction has to be consent recorded and then there is some trail of it uh, from both entity point of view and the resident point of view and finally security of course having two factor authentication non repeatable nature of the exchange and the the kyc data itself being uh, secure through encryption and data exchange that happens between the 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 stakeholders in this data exchange can happen in a seamless way so with these core principles what we have uh, uh, done is that open up mrr uh, application that is resident direct control with uidi and resident in in its control can start sharing his or her digital identity using mrr as a digital id wallet and uh, 
the capability is as simple as opening up a deep linking uh, endpoint entity between the business app and the MRR app so that the business app, if the uh, entity requires as part of its workflow registration flow, get having a KYC document, it goes as simple as UPI payment that happens today where from a, a business app to the UPI app, it goes through a deep linking and user enters the pin and then the transaction money transfer happens. The same logic and thought process is thought here in terms of exchanging of the KYC document with all those privacy and security capabilities that embed into the workflow, especially select to KYC and share the non-repeatable digital document to the business entity app and then carry forward the business transaction as simple as two clicks. And more importantly, the face authentication as a additional metric, MR that is uh, allowed only on those users whose mobile number is registered with Aadhaar as there's one factor that got in and with face business entity apps have an opportunity to ask for proof of presence based on the context of the transaction and opens up that additional layer of security for uh, business workflows to innovate their business processes. So that's the, 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 the scope of this uh, uh, integration and I don't want to go into too much of detail into these aspects of the technicalities but uh, the, the, the principles of this is such that the intent that between the two applications, the exchange can happen in a such a way so that it opens opportunities across industries, not only fintech, e-commerce, mobility, event, travel, etc. and so forth. And uh, this whole presentation is also available in YouTube in one for, uh, uh, as additional material for everyone to uh, look forward. Uh, the, the transaction goes as follows. The, Business entity app, when in the workflow journey wants the KYC document to proceed further, opens up the uh, MRR app through deep linking and then initiates a conversation to the resident saying that, hey, do you want to share your digital ID to the business entity to complete the transaction? User has to just click on the consent and the whole details of who is requesting everything shows up onto the MRR app for the resident to know what he is consenting for and then triggers a face authentication if the business entity wants it. And with the proof of presence done locally, the, the KYC data is shown to the business entity app and the business entity app takes it from here. And this is, a, this is just a display on the screen, but the digital non-repeatable document is what gets exchanged uh, here. I have a quick video and I will just uh, uh, walk through other scenarios at a macro level, but the principle remains the same. Uh, can anyone play the first link, please? Yeah. Uh, this is just a, a, a demo that we have done. Online KYC with an entity through deep linking with proof of presence. The resident needs to install the M Aadhaar app and the entity application on their own smartphone. Aadhaar offline KYC is initiated by the resident himself using the entity app. The resident enters his or her name and clicks on proof of presence. Through deep linking, the control shifts to the M Aadhaar app. If the name in the offline KYC request matches an already created profile in M Aadhaar, consent of the resident is requested. The consent of the resident is recorded. Since proof of presence is required, a local face match is initiated. The local face match captures the face image, performs a liveness check and matches the captured face against offline KYC photo. Finally, digitally signed and encrypted offline KYC information is shared with the entity application. Please note that the Aadhaar number of the resident was not required anywhere in the process. Yeah, thank you. So that's the, the basic essence of the uh, application and the integration and you have multiple flavors of it with proof of presence, without proof of presence, uh, becomes even more simpler where that whole face capture and authentication is skipped and it is just a seamless exchange. Um, and uh, so with this core concept, what we have done is we have taken a step back and understood the ecosystem and see how to open this interface for various personas that we encounter in the industry. And uh, Bharat being Bharat, we have people with smartphones who are conversant to use it, people with smartphones who are only conversant to just use WhatsApp but and make calls but not digitally savvy enough and people with feature phones and people with no phones basically all said and done. So we took this whole universe of Venn diagram which covers the whole population and tried to figure out what kind of permutations can come in this 
integration such that it opens up the capabilities to touch each and every of those individuals. And our analysis has boiled down to three normal use cases and one edge use case. And the first use case is what we just talked about, which is a, a typical use case in fintech world where fintech industry participants in trying to reach out to the digitally savvy customers. The deep linking on self-service device, more con uh, um, traditional approach and more secure as well because whole biometrics are not leaving the phone. The, uh, the, the data is securely exchanged between the apps and consent driven, everything set, all said and done. Now coming to the second set of customer base where uh, a resident may not be tech savvy to use uh, uh, his phone uh, and the, from the business context perspective as well it has to be an assisted operation uh, like the business processes where the operator driven transactions has to happen. Then you have the business and tap running on one device and the resident app is a mother on his own device. So uh, that's the second uh, use case. Uh, in the interest of time, uh, uh, I will try to uh, condense the, the message all said and done. It's about the data exchange here happens through QR code. Uh, uh, being the QR code is used to trigger the interaction between the two applications by just scanning. Uh, just like a payment experience today, we go to the merchant, scan the QR code and initiate the transfer. The logic is almost similar here. The, the MRR app exposes this interface to scan the QR code on the business and tab for sharing the KYC credentials and uh, take the conversations forward. And the actual transaction like the money moves between the accounts, the KYC data moves from the MRR local device to the business entities callback URL that gets shared uh, in the intent request. So the only difference here is that the uh, the there is a callback URL that additionally get has to be registered in this workflow by the business intact to receive the KYC document. So I wouldn't go uh, into all the uh, other videos. The workflow is similar, we can imagine in the interest of time. But I would request team to play the third video, which is about the consent history, which is the other security aspect of it, which I just want to show. And it is all about having After the consent the KYC locally. consent history, the resident has the ability to review their own offline KYC consent history stored locally on their device. Open the MRHAR app and click on Consent KYC Share History. The face icon indicates where proof of presence was part of the offline KYC request. So that's the consent and all of this work uh, scenarios is done in such a way that UIDI, CIDR is not aware of any of these transactions, this is purely offline. Offline we mean is offline to CIDR but not to the network connectivity to the business entity app. And to primarily bring in the concept of privacy with all the regulatory con constraints that exist in terms of usage of other with respect to uh, uh, the rulings and all that uh, uh, flows that we have seen in last many years, this is what we believe will open up that next leap of uh, leapfrog in terms of accessing the digital ID which is residents own identity document and that this will, is uh, will want to share it out and cons uh, avail a service, uh, this will open up that interfaces to as simple as UPI transaction that has made possible in last many years to take those leapfrog number of transactions to open up the economy. So with that, those are the two broad use cases which covers the, the user base who has a phone and phone number registered with Aadhaar as a two-factor and this addresses those uh, scenarios. Whether they use their own software or other software or all uh, lower level details that get addressed uh, in those two flows. The third use case is the big next chunk of users who don't have any mobile number at all and here uh, you are, uh, we believe that existing AUS who does online authentication through finger, iris, etc. and the, the, the success rate in terms of the finger quality issues, sensor issues, etc. Uh, we believe that this local match can be additional extra digital exception process mechanism can be introduced by the AU applications to open up uh, inclusion of the residents to uh, avail services by doing face authentication. So uh, again, uh, here the uh, transaction matching happens locally on the device, but this service is intended to only those existing AUAs uh, who can avail this service. In the other case, it is MRDA which is a residence device, residence own phone with his or her consent happening between the exchange. So everything is uh, uh, with as per the policies. 
So uh, again, here the interaction will be the same like the first use case is deep linking uh, on the operator device where the business entities are running and then the SDK that uses this local face match runs on that device and the interaction happens to uh, officially share the device. I won't go into this uh, video in the interest of time. I would like to use some reminder of time for question and interacting with uh, uh, the audience. Uh, but can we, I'll just skip to the last use case, which is access control. This is almost equal to DG Atra, uh, if any of you have already experienced it or aware of it. It is just that it is UIDI's local face match enabled. Uh, to open up that uh, capabilities. Again, it's a two-step process. Uh, the, uh, the idea here is that to control, uh, one doesn't have to carry his identity to uh, into a location, but he, he himself has the ID, can use his local face match to uh, um, uh, uh, get access to, uh, into uh, any event. And the first step is about registering the uh, uh, resident walks into the booking app or the event registers himself like uh, a cricket stadium and then uh, creates a QR code uh, embedding his KYC, minimum selective KYC data and uh, uh, generates a QR code that can be used as a token uh, at the check-in facility and uh, that information is also available on the check-in side because this is a, a two-step uh, process against that uh, for that particular event. When the resident walks into the event at the date and time that he's supposed to, he has to scan the QR code and then the KYC data gets pulled from the backend server on that entity's uh, servers and local face match happens and then uh, access control opens up. And uh, that's pretty much the, it is, uh, this feature is more about to control the authentication at a place and time basically, whereas other scenarios don't have that place and time constraints but here you have that place and time constraint additionally added so that one doesn't have to carry physical ID and the digital ID opens up that parameter of opportunities. With that, I'll pause uh, uh, these uh, uh, concepts that we have shown here as a working version of it is available and the APIs are available and one can reach out to UIDIS on the uh, email link here and then um, happy to uh, create micro pilots and then take this initiative forward and in coming quarters I hope this will open up that opportunities in the country that uh, may change, uh, give a different uh, window of opportunity for the residents to manage their KYC and share and open up their opportunities for service delivery. With that, uh, uh, that's all I would like to say for today and exciting phase to come up. I'm happy to take any questions for the mind of 8 to 10 minutes. version and release we went with the exact name as in other nothing stops uh, 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 we do have tools and uh, algorithms to get likelihood match so that it does, doesn't have to be exact like you rightly said uh, addition of additional a or h is very common uh, in our uh, vernacular system and uh, that is being thought through and that is part of our product roadmap but it will get introduced in the subsequent phases in the first release, we want to keep it exact match, but that capability exists today in the demo auth and it's nothing stops us to introduce a policy decision at some point in time. Uh, is not just, uh, this issue is not just in one government body actually. This is across all the government bodies, right, from, you know, banks to the, you know, PF office. Or anywhere you go, there is a name mismatch. Somewhere you see initials, somewhere you see, you know, surname or something, you know, expanded name. And also from passport to your PAN card to, you know, like any identity that you are having, including your voter ID card. And uh, this is something, this suggestion should go to all the government bodies to, like, have a unique name throughout. Throughout any uh, government ID proofs that you are having, it should have a unique name. 
so that is something to be maintained i think this is suggestion for the you know other actually uida that is that is where i think uh, personally i feel uh, that is where you can pass this message on to all other government bodies both central as well as state uh, so that this can also help uh, any tech industry or any deep technologies to implement in a very unique way it can start for a lot of problems in india uh, I, that's it i want to say thank you i think this feedback has been coming in multiple forums in last few uh, uh, months for sure and years for that matter uh, my uh, personal experience again here is that as a maturity of other penetration happened to 99.9% uh, of the residents uh, slowly what is happening um, at least at the higher uh, uh, sec of the pyramid level the passports and pan cards and stuff uh, where we have a very small percentage a point taken but that started creeping in in terms of getting name as in aadhar into those documents it's a matter of time uh, i fully agree with you and uh, we have to be watchful and uh, the session will be uh, actually what happened was in my pf account it was my full name but in my education it was first name and last name and i changed my pf account into my aadhar card but all my pf account which was there is not on un- under good access so they have to my, my name is changed in pf account so i don't know what is can you please that we can take so the valid point here is for for the excels i understand how technology works people i think they were in the corner portal or in fact area of portal i know how technology works in your bank so how it should you know provide the information so how it should be but somebody imagine there are one i know much of the So, uh, so let me take this back to the conversation. The whole idea of this feature is to get to avoid that in the first place by deep linking, auto filling the digital ID, so that there is no scope of manual entry, right? And if Aadhaar becomes your single source of truth, and then that gets cascaded into your business application, that is our forward-looking. Uh, I don't want to go into past. We have a huge past in terms of going back hundreds of years. We don't want to get into that, but looking way forward, and that's the whole point of this uh, uh, note as well, is to think what is that that plus one will make that uh, 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 complex problem solvable. And for us, we believe this is that plus one that is going to create solve that complex problem in a in a simplistic way for our complex country. With that, I would like to uh, yeah, please. So uh, there is a lot of push on uh, financial inclusion and uh, there are a lot of startups who are trying to bring in first time investors into the uh, ambit of investing and KYC is a sacrosanct requirement before somebody can start investing. Um, the intermediaries who are uh, helping to the digital KYC have levied some charges to get the KYC done. Is there an opportunity or a way where directly the investment tech or the fintechs can coordinate with uh, the government body and get the KYC done without any charge? Yeah, that goes into policy and regulatory than technology for me to comment on that. But I think going by recent headline news that has happened uh, in the budget session as well, going outside here, I think some of those conversations are already happening and the feedback has been coming multiple times. And all I can say is that uh, uh, let us look forward for those announcements to happen and then, uh, and this is one such in, uh, innovation. And then again at a regulatory level, policy level, uh, multiple forms of KYC has already been talked about in the news already. Uh, so I am hoping as a technologist here, uh, uh, um, uh, we want to create the palantra of capabilities available there and then the policy and regulatory uh, will apply the risk controls and then open up those opportunities for various the pyramids that we have to, uh, is all I would like to say. And this is one of those capabilities at the bottom of our pyramids to open up that opportunity is all I would like to comment at this point in time. Uh, sir, a quick question. Uh, given the concerns on data privacy, uh, how can fintechs utilize the offline KYC methods uh, You know, without data privacy issue for their customers? Uh, so that's where the selective KYC comes in, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, very powerful. Today, KYC document, if you get uh, uh, a, any identity document, there is no option for you to strip off the capabilities and only look, which again, yet it is being non-reputable in nature. 
So definitely select to KYC if I am doing my KYC for a requirement where uh, date of birth may not be required, year of birth is good enough. Right? As an example I am saying or address is required or just a pin code is good enough. So those are the options that select to KYC will open up number one. Number two, of course, at the end of the day, any regulation when it comes to privacy, it will be techno legal. And if you take any uh, regulation, uh, DEPA regulation that opens up data protection, and we hope that uh, uh, those things will continue to uh, prevail. Number two, third thing is that the offline KYC as a mechanism doesn't have other number, and that is where some of the whole. Uh, 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 challenges that we had with Aadhaar number being a biometric deduplicated ID and that has got much higher value of order of uh, priority. So we tried to unbundle that and create this offering to open those capabilities uh, without risking uh, on the privacy side. So with those, I, I, I have anything else. So I think uh, from time point of view, I don't know whether we have any, uh, but any 